when the macula dries out and you get this dry form of macula degeneration, it's frustrating to us because we really don't have much to offer. But there is, in fact, research being done because a lot of people have the dry form of macular degeneration. And someone who knows a great deal about it, and who, somebody who's going to speak to you today on the research being done for the dry macular degeneration is Dr. Alan Ho, again from Mid-Atlantic. He was a former partner uh, of mine until he went out into the real world. And Alan, come on up and uh, teach us all about the research being done for dry macular degeneration. Wow, look at this. The response is, is overwhelming, I think, even for Lee Bramnick. And I'd like to uh, acknowledge the Lottmans for their vision, their vision uh, for patients with macular degeneration. And Lee alluded to the problem and the growth of the problem as the baby boomer segment ages, uh, your children, your grandchildren, and for you yourselves, afflicted with this condition that affects your ability to do the important things that you want to do, drive, read, see your grandchildren. And uh, I'd also like to thank Sandy and, and Lee. I, I was on faculty at Penn for five years. And I can tell you that back then, as they are today, they have been the most dedicated people. Sandy, to truth and science, he was the first to arrive and the last to go at Shea Institute. And Lee, the same way. So I'd like to acknowledge them again and give them a round of applause. The dry form of macular degeneration is tricky, and people say that dry is the new wet form. Why is that? Why is dry wet? Well, dry is wet because 10 years ago, we didn't have anything for wet, and right now, today, we don't have much for dry. Emily Chu's in the audience, and she's one of the lead investigators of the ARID study. The ARID study established that the vitamins and supplements that you take, antioxidants, zinc, copper, actually slow down the progression of the disease. But the dirty little secret about that study, the dirty little secret, is that Emily and Rick Ferris, her partner in crime, never thought it was going to work. Okay? In fact, Rick Ferris said to me, you know what, Alan? I thought that the ARID study, which looked at cataract progression and macular degeneration pro progression, was going to work for cataract and not work for macular degeneration. Why would he say that? Well, you develop this disease over decades, you suddenly take a 70-year-old patient, throw some vitamins at them, who would expect there to be an effect? Well, as it turns out, he tells me he was wrong twice, and I want to bet on this. He was wrong twice because it didn't work for cataract, but there is some modest reduction of progression for AMD. Looking down the line to go beyond vitamins and supplements, I want you to think about low-tech solutions, maybe other nutrients, maybe omega-3s, maybe lutein and zeaxanthine, and Emily's going to speak to that. The reason why they're exploring that is that there's a very rich literature looking at people who consume high amounts of lutein and zeaxanthine. Guess what? They have a lower risk. People that consume high amounts of omega-3, for example, tuna and salmon, guess what? They have a lower risk. But just because you eat something, okay, you may see what you eat, but just because you eat it and it's in the epidemiologic literature doesn't mean that if you put it in a pill, a big pill, you guys know that, doesn't mean that it's going to work as an intervention. And that's why it's important for us to do the science to determine that. And she's doing that and leading the way. I'll let her talk about that. Down the line, there are other ways that we're looking at trying to slow down the progression of dry AMD. The pizza analogy was perfect. Imagine losing the cheese, losing the sauce. That's basically atrophic age-related maculopathy. Wet gets all the attention, but guess what? You can lose vision with dry, and there are a couple ways that we're looking at trying to support that pizza to keep it vigorous, to keep the vision cells and the foundation cells vigorous. One way is to provide growth factors, drugs that will help keep those vision cells alive. And the delivery becomes very interesting. You can do it 
with little pellets that you implant surgically. Imagine really having dry AMD. Most of you, <clears throat> most of you can see and read fine, but getting a surgery to implant a pellet in your eye that will release things over time. Why? Because as Sandy said, it needs to be over time because it's like the grass dying. It's very slow. Another way to do it is with stem cells. Not, um, ne not embryonic, but umbilical stem cells. And injecting them with a special microcatheter under the retina to release growth factors to help those vision cells. Very high-tech solutions that are being explored and maybe three to five years in time frame, some answers on that. One major topic that's being looked at in a lot of medicine and age-related maculopathy is the idea of inflammation. Inflammation hit the front page, the cover of Time Magazine several years ago. Why? Because people realize that the body's infl inflammation or immune system, or really the immune system gone awry, can cause things like Alzheimer's disease, heart disease, cancer, and guess what? We find evidence of inflammation and age-related macular degeneration. So there, there are ways and there are people looking at modulating inflammation simply by injecting, for example, a steroid in a patient with geographic atrophy, where that pizza has lost the cheese to try and prevent progression of atrophy, or by injecting other little molecules that kind of try and put the immune system that's gone awry back in sync. The immune system, when it goes awry, can not only attack, let's say, a bacteria or virus, but it, it can attack your own cells, your vision cells. And that's why inflammation is important, and that's something that's being looked at today. So <clears throat> when you think about age-related macular generation, dry is the, is the new wet. Think about low-tech solutions. Maybe we'll have some more or different kinds of supplements. Or think about high-tech solutions. You know we love doing those needles. Maybe we'll be injecting even more eyes. I don't know how we're going to do it. You fill our, you, I mean, our waiting rooms look like this, but there are a variety of things uh, to try and make things better, uh, consistent with the vision of the Lotman. So thank you very much. My name is Dr. Alan Ho. I'm a retinal specialist in the Philadelphia area. Uh, we're based at Will's Eye Institute and Mid-Atlantic Retina. Uh, we see patients and care for patients with retinal conditions uh, ranging from macular degeneration to diabetic retinopathy and are involved in trying to push the science forward in terms of uh, bringing better treatments for our patients. I think these types of seminars, uh, such as the one uh, sponsored by the Macular Vision Research Foundation, are important because in the day-to-day -day patient care setting in our offices, uh, patients don't really have much of a forum to interact with a variety of doctors, to hear different things, different perspectives from other people. I think it's, it's a nice venue. It raises awareness, not only amongst the patients themselves, uh, of their caregivers and of the community. We don't have the cure, but we certainly have treatments that are impressive in allowing people to do the things they want to do with their vision.